raped on native land. Tribes don't have any authority over that perpetrator if he's a non-Indian, even if he's your husband. The local police in that area don't have any authority. The county sheriff doesn't have any authority. The state trooper can't come in and arrest them. And the only person that has any authority over that non-Indian is some federal agent in Madison, Wisconsin, 500 miles away. Um, I guess you call 911, but if all parties involved are non-native, um, I, I can't arrest anybody. That's one of the things that is hard for me to tell a native whose aggressor or a suspect is non-involved. There might not be an arrest made right now. I don't like that. We don't have jurisdiction over non-Indians in terms of criminal authority. Tribes can't prosecute most non-Indians for things they do to Native women on the reservation. Now, most of the perpetrators of violence against Native women are non-Native. It's a really significant fact because most crime in America is intra-racial. So a white woman is more likely to have a white perpetrator. And the only exception to that general rule is Native women. And tribes don't have jurisdiction over those men. The irony is that the federal system simply has ignored Native women. They are the responders and they don't respond. So it has created sort of a jurisdictional vacuum. It, it's, it's created sort of a, a protection for these, these non-Native men, largely white men, who commit crimes against their wives, their girlfriends, strangers, neighbors, and the tribe can't do anything to stop them. It's not that because my great-grandmother and my grandmother and my mother were raped, I will be raped. It's because perpetrators know that great-grandma and grandma and mom's case was never prosecuted. Mm -hmm.